Okay, basic requirements of an exit route. Permanent and the exit routes must be permanent and there must be enough exits in the proper arrangement for quick escape. So that takes into account how the building is set up, where the people are located at, where the people are routinely located at. If there's if they're always occupied or only partially occupied, okay? So the fire marshal has to take into account how many uh, exits from a room itself into the exit route, or the exit access actually, um, how many people we can seat, and uh, this guy here, I think in this room, I think it's 49 on each side, so I think they would assume that this would be shut. Okay, to, to get, so there's only one uh, access, or one exit, okay? With it open, the room might be allowed to have more if it was this size room because there's two exits. So that's something the fire dude, the fire marshal takes into account, okay? Um, any questions on that one? And there's gotta be enough to handle all the people. If this room can handle 49, how many seats we have in here? Say there's 80 seats in here, it gets two, uh, if there's a fire, there's certain time, and they, they figure out how many people can make it through the doorway, and if there's going to be a log jam. Anybody remember some of these concerts that you hear about? Uh, where, where was that one at? Um, there's one back in New York. Here. Was it New York? Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Yeah, where, yeah, where the, the, the people got log jammed at the exit. There just wasn't enough exits for that many people. Um, if there had only been 20 people in there, everybody could have got out, but when you start getting the mass pushing <coughs> against it, then instead of the funnel aspect, you got the square thing and things don't roll out of the funnel. So um, there's a lot that goes into figuring out exit routes and floor loading and how many exits you have to have. That's why doors open out when it's in zero in range. I never thought of that. Right there, the, like, like that door right there, one of the things, one of some happened a long time ago a fire burned up and the doors came in so people couldn't get out because the doors were open so it's in there it's bottlenecked them so that's a fire requirement right there the doors open out you know in. good call <laughs> exits exits you say exit enough it doesn't come out like exit anymore i don't know why exits must be separated by fire resistant materials okay what does that mean metal that just means the door has to have a fire rating, right? So it's got to be able to not burn through or withstand for X number of minutes before it burns through. So that's a solid, that's probably a solid core door. So it's going to have, it's going to have a fire rating on how long it will burn through, right? Where if it's a hollow core door, it's going to go through a lot quicker time. If it's a steel door, uh, steel can you know, disfigure in extreme heat, but it's probably going to have a, a much longer fire rating. So it's got to be separated by fire resistant material. It doesn't say fireproof, okay? Fire resistant. That means it's not going to burn like paper, okay? And everything has its own ratings depending on thickness, the type of material it's constructed of, hollow or solid. Uh, so everything has different ratings. Openings into an exit must be limited to those necessary to allow access to the exit or to the exit discharge. Okay, um, I can't think of really any good examples here, but we had a few out at ATR where you have an exit that has multiple things up there, closets, okay? The one I'm thinking of in particular had a closet, okay? You can't have so many openings in there that it's going to prevent people, if the doors are open, from getting out of that area. Okay. Also, you don't want the confusion factor. If they've got three doors to choose from, you know, you don't want to have, <laughs> even though there might be an exit sign right on it, right? If there's a lot of smoke and they're down on their <coughs> knees or something like that, they might not be able to tell. So you don't want a bunch of doors there when everybody knows the exit's that way and you get down and say behind door number one, door number two, or door number three, okay? So, so you want to make sure there's not a whole lot of access there to be confusing, okay? Um, an opening into an exit must be protected by an approved self-closing fire door that remains closed or autom automatically closes in an emergency. Okay, um, 
Self-closing just means it's got that, that uh, probably pneumatic uh, return on it, right? That's all self-closing. Or, or it could be springs or whatever cause them to, to go shut. Um, if they're held open and there's a fire, they need to be able to be automatically closed. So if you have like a, a mechanic or a, a magnetic uh, door that opens, it needs to be like an electromagnet that when the fire alarm goes off, power goes away and the door closes by itself. Okay, so if it's one that you want to be open, it's got to have the ability to shut by itself. Okay, does, that, does everybody understand what I'm talking about? Why do you want it shut when there's a fire and you're trying to get out? Because it's a barrier from the fire going from one area to the next. Population control. Yeah, you'd actually have. It's, it, won't, it doesn't prevent the door from opening. It prevents the door from being held open. There's some of them. Do what? Huh? What's your name? Me? Yeah. Sean. Sean, okay. Sean, like S-E-A-N? Yeah. <laughs> there's no W. And there's a W sound in Sean. Okay. All right. I I'm sorry, Sean. Go ahead. What were you saying? Uh, or did you forget? Doors, when the doors close like that, uh, drafts and air movement isn't as common, so it's not going to spread the fire as quickly. Yeah, that's what it's for. It's so... It's so like if, if the ceiling's burning or the walls are burning in this area and you activate the fire alarm, all those doors lose power and they'll spring shut. They're magnetically held open and they shut to keep the fire from spreading from this area to that next area. It can still spread, but it's got to burn through the door first. So, um, yeah, that's, that's exactly what they're for, to keep it from spreading. Mary, you want to say something? You forgot? No, I didn't forget. It's, those doors are scary, though. Doors like that aren't supposed to be able to be locked, okay? The only way, we'll, we'll see here in a little while, the only way that you that a door can be locked from the inside, at, and you can lock fire exits, but they have to be continuously supervised. So where are some areas you want, we'll get to it in a minute, but let's talk about it now. Where are some areas you want to have the doors locked from the inside? Like Mary said, uh, Psychiatric ward in a mental hospital or something like that. Any place else? Prison. Prison. Prison, right. That's another big one. Prison. <laughs> no, no joke. Prisoners are people too. And they have rights. If, if you have a door that's a fire exit that you're locking from the inside, it's got to be continuously supervised. So you got to have a person there that can, if there's a fire, get the door open. Does that mean they'll open? No. You, you're talking about if there's a fire and the alarm sounds, does it have to unlock itself? No. But there has to be somebody stationed there to unlock it. Unless they panic. What if the fire yeah, destroys your control system and you can't unlock the door? Uh, you need to say that. If it's locked, it's not. It's usually there is the electronic buzzer, but you'll you'll always have. If, if it's the electronic buzzer, that will fail because it's um, it's magnetic. And what you do is usually on those you'll de-energize a magnet. It'll spring return out and it'll hold it. But they're also usually mechanically locked. What about like okay. crash bars though too? Crash bars are acceptable. They keep crash bars or panic bars, they keep the door locked from the outside. So you can't pull the door open to come in from the outside, but you can push the door to go out. Like like what we have uh, in, in this Eztech in, in the lab downstairs. You can push all those doors open, but they're locked so you can't get them open or pull it open from the outside. So that's why you guys have to prop them open all the time. <laughs> by the way is illegal okay okay an opening into an exit must be protected by we already read that okay any questions on this those are all good points by the way you brought up 